Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 3.48 and in this lesson we're going to take a look at the rotary device. One quick point about the tremolo which is also relevant to the rotary is that we have no sync to tempo button, right? We don't have a sync to tempo so we're setting this tremolo based on a rate which is set in hertz and the rate is really low so this is basically operating like an LFO. Um, in a lot of ways. And the truth is, if you want something to be synced to tempo, you're going to want to use the LFO device and you could actually just set the LFO device. For example, I'll just show you really quick. Uh, let's pull it up real quick. You could set the LFO device onto amplitude and it could actually then work very similar to a tremolo. Um, just that it would actually be synced to tempo, assuming that you set it up that way. So we could change it to time and beats, in which case then you wouldn't really need to use the tremolo device. But just thought I'd throw that out there so you guys are aware if you're wondering why is there no sync to tempo button. That's basically the reason, because we can get the exact same effect going through an LFO modulator into a tool. So there you go. Onto the rotary, same thing right now. We don't have a time effect. Our time effect is in milliseconds. And um, our rate, again, is set by hertz. So if you wanted to create something that's synced, you could use an LFO mod going into a tool device and, again, onto the pan knob. Okay, so there are always workarounds for everything, but this rotary device is really, really cool. I would have loved to have it in some of my previous uh, compositions because a lot of times I did things that the rotary was doing manually. So the rotary is basically like an auto pan, whereas the tremolo was changing the amplitude. The rotary is not going to change the amplitude as much as it is just the relative pan position. So if we crank on the drum loop here, and we turn the amplitude up, we'll start to hear that. As the amplitude is turned down, the effect is still happening, but it's just more and more subtle. And you can see it here in the left and over to the right, as compared to letting it go all the way to the left and then back all the way to the right. We can change the speed with the rate knob. And then we also have a delay time, which it's very hard to hear, but it does occur. So if we really have the settings cranked, for example, and I start to turn this delay time on, here it is with no delay time to the effect. Okay, so again, listen to the start. And now let's put some delay time on. Right, you can hear that difference. The delay time only goes up to two milliseconds. So you're really using it if you have something really extreme. By doing this, you can actually kind of set where it's gonna start. Is it gonna start on the left? Is it gonna start on the right? Okay, so do be aware of that. That is what you can use this delay modulation for. You'll have the ability to kind of push it into the left or the right first and give the effect just a little bit of uh, time before kicking in, which when you have the settings really dialed up high like this, that's how you're gonna indicate the channel where you want to start. Uh, this is effect that you can use, again, very subtly. So let's say what would be really cool is if we had like a delay two going and maybe we just have like a random preset. I don't really care what preset. What does all to D mean? I'm a little bit worried about that. <laughs> Maybe I made that one. I don't know. Turn on the rotary. It's like craziness here. 
especially if I slow it down. So really cool, there's a lot you could do. We could even throw a reverb on here and then we could have the reverb signal being auto panned back left to right. A simple effect, but a powerful one. So that's pretty much all there is to the rotary effect. Have some fun experimenting with it. It's a lot of fun and I absolutely love it because I'm all about sort of those relative positions in the stereo field left to right. And um, it's one that I know I'm going to use all the time when I'm doing some sound design. So thank you for watching, take care, and you'll hear from me again in the next lesson.